Hi, my name is Sean Hudspeth and I'm a professional racing driver with Ferrari. Today we're going to be reviewing one of my all-time favorite V8 Ferraris, the Ferrari F430. Like, subscribe to my channel. For more videos like this, we're going to be posting regular car reviews, uh, so stay tuned. Straight away when we get in, it's one of the coolest interiors I've ever seen. You have this awesome massive rev counter in front of you and it makes you feel like you're in a real racing car. You have these circular air conditioning vents which are very, very similar to my GT3 racing car that I drive. You have this lovely uh, Ferrari logo here. Um, it just feels very, very special when you're sitting in it. The current owner has opted for these long uh, carbon fiber paddles which are super, super nice. Uh, the interior is not overly complicated, it's simple, but it has a nice design and it has a special feeling to it as well. If you look at the attention to detail on the stitching, it's very, very nice. Even the carpets, the quality of the leather, the seats feel great. Everything about this is a nice place to be. Here we have the Manatino. Basically, it's how you select the characteristics of the car. So the first one is uh, snow and ice, pretty much irrelevant, especially for Singapore. The next one is for regular road use. Then we have a sport mode, uh, which sort of backs off the traction control, speeds up the throttle response, the gear changes, the exhaust note, uh, suspension as well, it becomes a little bit stiffer. We also have race mode, which is sort of more pronounced, a little bit more aggressive. And then the final one is a CST off, which basically turns all the driver aids off. I don't think I'm gonna use that today. Today we're gonna be driving around the roads of Singapore, so I think sport mode will be perfect. I'm in love already. The visibility is good, I'm not having any problems filtering. It's very, very easy to drive. So even though this model is the one with the F1 uh, flappy paddle transmission, there is an auto mode. So you can drive the car in automatic mode very, very easily. But I prefer to use the paddles because you can just have more fun with it. At the end of the day, this is a road car that you can drive on the racetrack. The other thing is most of the second-hand uh, F430s in Singapore, uh, they come already equipped with a flappy paddle gearbox. In the past, if you wanted a Ferrari with a flappy paddle gearbox, uh, you had to sell your left leg. Now, before we go any further, I just want to say a big thank you to my title sponsor, East Coast Podiatry. They are a specialized clinic in Singapore for incredibly fast and effective treatments. I really wanted to have them as my team podiatrist as they have been keeping me pain-free so that I can perform at my best. When I broke my ankle, they handled my post-op treatment and it was just amazing. This was like the ultimate test. I had to recover from a broken ankle in a matter of weeks, so they were pressed for time, working against the clock. They went all out like a pit crew and they did different types of high intensity treatment just to get me back on track as quickly as possible. After my first surgery, I could race, but I still couldn't run. Nearly five months later, I had a second surgery to remove the metal work which they put in the first time. However, I was still in too much pain to be able to run. Then I flew back to Singapore and after just a few weekly treatments at East Coast Podiatry, I was able to run again for the first time in nearly six months. They really made such a huge difference for me. I have personally recommended my own parents and my friends to go and see them. So if you're looking for a clinic which is absolutely world-class at treating foot, ankle, knee and general leg issues, East Coast Podiatry is one that you can really depend on. Now back to the car. So I absolutely love the styling of this car. I remember when it came out in 2005, I was only 11 years old. And I just dreamt every day since of being able to drive one. And thanks to a good friend of mine, that dream has finally uh, turned into a reality. The car was designed by Pin and Farina in collaboration with Frank Stevenson. And it looks absolutely fantastic. The oval air intakes at the front sort of resemble the uh, Ferrari F1 from 1961, the 156 that Phil Hill drove to the F1 World Championship. So there's some history in the car as well. No other brand has a racing history as rich and as long as Ferrari does. They're just miles ahead of everyone else. And when you're driving a Ferrari, you really feel that emotion and the passion and the racing history that has gone into it. You feel the passion and the love of the engineers, the mechanics, it just feels special. The other thing with this is that the F430 is one of Ferrari's last naturally aspirated V8 engines. So you have that lovely sound, uh, which gets lost a little bit of the newer turbo. So that's always something to appreciate if you buy a Ferrari F430. Also with the Spider, this is the last model with the transparent engine cover. So you have that lovely view of the lovely uh, 4.3 liter V8 behind. 
Another thing I love about the styling of this car is that every air intake, every vent that you see has a purpose. For example, the air vents that are in front of the front wheels, they're there to help reduce drag of the air coming in through the front and passing through the radiators. So everything has a purpose. Even the, these little uh, gaps in the wing mirrors, that's to direct airflow to the rear air intakes to cool the engine. And one of uh, the F430's trademarks was that you have the name of the car, F430, etched into the wing mirror, only on the right side, which I think was really, really cool. I wish they kept that. At the back, you've got those traditional quadruple rear tail lights, which are very, very Ferrari-esque. And they're sort of inspired from the 360, which was the predecessor, but they've been raised up and out so the top of the headlight sticks out of the body of the car, so it makes it look a little bit more aggressive. Some people say that the 360 was a little bit too round, a bit too soft. So with the F430, they just wanted to work on making the car a little bit more aggressive, a bit more Ferrari. So on a twisty road, the chassis just feels so in tune. It just goes where you steer it. The car feels light. If the corner is flat, there's absolutely no roll. When you drive this car at the limit, you're really able to pull off spectacular power slides. And uh, that's uh, thanks to the wonderful new E-differential at the time, which came from Michael Schumacher's 2004 Formula One car. I think that's definitely one of the most special things about this car, the engine made in Ferrari's factory in Maranello. The history in this engine is just incredible. So I'm gonna put the car into race mode now, which basically sharpens up the throttle response, sharpens up the gear changes, makes the exhaust note louder, stiffens up the suspension. Oh. So with the new body design, you have the same drag coefficient as the 360, but even more downforce, so the car is so stable at high speeds. This is just amazing. Oh, oh man. What an engine. With the expressway above us, the sound just bounces off the ceiling and it sounds unreal. Listen to this. I've got goosebumps. Just never get sick of that. And I love this sound of the exhaust. You get this bubble on the overrun. So when you go on the throttle and then you get off, there's this bop, 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 bop sound, which is basically just the access fuel being burnt off. But I love it. So Ferraris are a very, very special make of car. It's a very, very special brand. So they only make around 10,000 cars per year. And most manufacturers mass, you know, that mass produce their cars, they can make that much in like a week. So Ferrari don't make very, very many cars, so they're very, very exclusive. So they already keep their value. A lot of people buy Ferraris as an investment, and especially now, all the new Ferraris are becoming turbo. And we're gonna lose the V8 soon as well to a V6. This car is already an icon, so it'll definitely hold its value. If not, go up because it's gonna be a future classic for sure. The other reason is by 2035, the Singapore government has uh, introduced rules to stop the import of um, petrol cars or combustion engines. Uh, and only allowing for, um, I think it's electric cars. So with the supply rather going down and fewer Ferraris in Singapore, simple rule of demand and supply, the value is gonna go up for sure. If I had the money, I would buy this car right now. Should you own or should you buy a Ferrari in Singapore? And the answer is yes. And there are three main reasons. One is that you have some of the smoothest roads in the world. The second thing is that it's very safe. So you don't need to worry about your car getting stolen. You don't need to worry about someone coming and scratching it or trying to mug you in the car. And the final reason is that, you know, we live so close to Malaysia and in Sepang we have a world-class Formula One racing track, which you can pay to go and rent. So even if you do want to drive the car super fast, you can always go there. Especially as restrictions are easing now, you have a lot more opportunities. 
But even if you don't, even if you want to just drive the car slowly, it's an absolute joy, it's an absolute pleasure. You know, even if you're just trundling along at 60 kilometers an hour, the car feels great. It has a great noise. To be honest, I'm struggling to find any bad things about this car. There's nothing that I don't like. Wow, what a day. Uh, I feel very, very privileged to be able to drive one of my childhood heroes today. Thank you to everyone who made this possible. Thank you to my sponsors and thank you to you, the viewers, for watching. I hope you liked the video. Uh, and uh, leave a comment uh, to let me know which Ferrari you want me to review next. Stay tuned. I got the rhythm in my feet. I haven't had bar chow mein since February when I left. And we're at Changi Village right now and I've never actually had this one. I know it's famous. So I can't tell you how excited I am for this.